Welcome back, everybody. This week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. A very important show. As I mentioned in the beginning, our guest is Dr. Martin Blank. He's an expert on health-related effects of electromagnetic fields. has been studying the subject for over 30 years. He holds two PhDs, one from Columbia, one from the University of Cambridge. From 1968 to 2011, he taught as an associate professor at Columbia University, where he now acts as special lecturer. He's part of the Department of Physiology at Columbia. He's published over 200 papers and reviews, and his new book, which is must-reading, is called Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. Martin Blank with us on the program. Dr. Blank, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to have you here, and I mentioned this is a really important program. And at the beginning of the book, Overpowered, which, by the way, is available all across the country at all the major bookstores, uh, Amazon.com, as well as BarnesandNoble.com, information at our website as well. In the beginning of the book, people ask you what it is that you're studying. And when you talk about you're working on the biological effects of cell phones and Wi-Fi-related devices, they ask, are there any dangers? And when you start to tell them we find there's substantial risk, they sort of end the conversation. Is that part of the problem you run into and others in trying to inform us about the possible dangers? We re- It's such an important part of our lives, we really don't want to hear anything negative. I believe so. I mean, denial is a very, very useful kind of mechanism that we have so that we keep on going. I mean, you take a look in the mirror and you may not like what you see, so very often you just don't say it's there or you try and ignore it. I think people realize that there's have to be a problem, but it, you don't feel it. You don't see it. You don't taste it. There's just nothing you feel about this stuff. When, it gets re- when you really feel it, like an electric shock, you pull your hand away real quick. But the thing is that with this stuff, it's insidious. It happens slowly. You don't sense it. And therefore, you think it's without, you know, without any effect. Well, it's- and the other thing is we're always, well, you know, uh, being cautioned by people about, oh, there are all these guys who say, that, you know, the penny penny, the sky is falling, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there are a lot of dangers in life, but we live with these dangers and we learn to uh, cope with them. I mean, after all, uh, we drive cars. When cars were introduced, you know, they went rather slowly and they didn't do very much damage. Now we get what? I don't know. 20,000 people a year ago, maybe more. I don't know what the number of fatalities uh, in the United States. Uh, well, yeah, now. it's it's tens of thousands. What's so impressive with overpowered, what science tells us about the dangers of cell phones and other Wi-Fi age devices, is you lay it out. It's very easy to read, but you lay it out with all the scientific evidence. And we've sort of been led to believe that, yeah, there are found some problems there. And when you talk about limitations... The industry always comes forward and says there is no solid evidence. Do you feel from your studies that there is solid evidence that we better slow down a little bit and take a look at the impact? There's absolutely no question that there is solid evidence. I mean, these guys are setting up a uh, what they call evidence, which is all kinds of epidemiology studies, where they go around and they say, uh, well, these guys have used the phone for... Uh, Five years and there's no, they don't get cancer, let's say, in a cancer in the brain or something like that. And uh, the, the figures are hard to get because people don't just live with a phone on their heads. What they do is they do all kinds of other things. And so if you do get cancer, then people say, well, it probably came from something else. Uh, maybe it was related to diet or to smoking or to drinking or who knows what. Those aren't the kinds of studies I'm talking about. If there's a problem with the body, you really have to investigate the body. What you have to do is see whether, in fact, there are messages that are coming from the cells that tell you that there's a problem. And it's quite clear that there are messages. When you ask a cell if it's in trouble, it tells you in the language of the cell that there is trouble. They make special kinds of proteins. And the body is set up with all these kinds of mechanisms. When it's in trouble, it is sending out signals. You know that when you uh, you get, I don't know, you get scared or you're exercising very heavily, you start to breathe faster. Your, your heart pumps faster. That's because there are signals that are sent out by the cells that say they need more oxygen. They need to do something. They need a greater circulation. And so you send out cortisol. You send out epinephrine from the cells. Well, cells have a special 
mechanism for when they encounter danger. When they get uh, exposed to electromagnetic fields, they start to make special proteins. These are called heat shock proteins because they were first identified when cells were exposed to a high temperature. And so the heat shock proteins will be the message. That's the language that you can hear the cells telling you that they're in danger. They do that when there's low oxygen. They do that, they do that with alcohol. You expose cells to alcohol, they will start to make stress proteins. And when you read these messages, after cells that are exposed to electromagnetic fields, there is absolutely no doubt in your mind that the cells feel they've got to do something. They've got to make themselves, they've got to prepare for this danger. And it is a real danger because cells do get problems as a result of this. Our guest on this week in America is Dr. Martin Blank, author of the book Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. The book available, as I said, all across the country. Of course, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link onto that information. Let's talk a little bit about the, the harmful impacts. We've heard studies, but we don't hear a whole lot about them uh, with the cell phone. And the cell phone is something that all of us have now, and we have it pressed up against our ear most of the most of the time during the day anymore. And we hear about brain cancer. Is is there a link between brain cancer and use of the cell phone? Uh, there have been actually epidemiology studies that have found a link between gliomas, which is a cancer that occurs in glial cells in the brain, and also acoustic neuromas with the nerve that runs from the uh, ear to the brain, and that uh, very close to where one holds a cell phone. Now, those are epidemiology studies, and they will tell you that people who use this cell phone are more likely to get these kinds of cancers when they, uh, after they've used them for uh, any number of years. The problem with cancer as an endpoint is that it is, first of all, it takes a while till the uh, effects show up. And even in something like exposure to uh, ionizing radiation, the very hot stuff that comes from atomic explosions, uh, it, in many cases, the, the data that one has from what happened in Japan from the dropping of this atom bomb, some of the brain cancer cases didn't show up till after 40 years. So, I mean, if you're waiting for that as an endpoint, you're not gonna get an answer to a scientific question. The fact is that these uh, signals that come from uh, radiation, non-ionizing radiation, will cause changes in cells. And one of the changes that they cause is they cause damage. People have measured the damage that occurs to DNA. When you expose cells to uh, this kind of non-ionizing radiation, the, the DNA will break up. DNA, as you all know, is the stuff that carries our hereditary information. It's packed very nicely inside cells and it stays there and I guess through our lifetime. But it's exposed to all kinds of things and the result is that when it's exposed to something that causes damage, that damage will stay there unless the cell is removed, unless the cell dies or the damage is repaired. Now we do a lot of repair and that's another aspect of the uh, exposure to uh, EMF. Uh, we do a lot of the repair at night and at night, what happens is that the, uh, all these repair mechanisms come and get rid of the bad stuff and help to uh, uh, make the molecular repairs. But the fact is that the repair mechanism uh, is impaired. It, 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 it cannot work well. One of the things that has been found, and this is also established, that when one is exposed to uh, EMF at night, the brain cells that make melatonin will stop secreting melatonin. And melatonin is the stuff that keeps us asleep and that helps to start the repair mechanisms for the damaged DNA. So you now are doing things that are gonna interfere with the repair mechanism. So you have it's kind of a double whammy. You not only get the damage caused by the EMF, but the EMF will shut off the repair mechanisms that are meant to work at night while you're asleep. We're so, talking about the harmful effects of electromagnetic fields. Our guest on the program is Dr. Martin Blank. is author of the new book, Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. 
I mentioned cancer because that's the one that people keep bringing up and they feel there's not enough evidence. We want to believe there's not enough evidence out there. But you point out in the book, overexposed, overpowered, it's not just cancer. There are other health problems that can be generated by the EMFs. Yes, there sure are. And the thing is that when it hits, well, I just mentioned the interference with melatonin, which people now associate with restful sleep, but it's the time when you get repairs. But there are other kinds of things that happen with the exposure to uh, EMF. And the, the thing is that you get DNA damage in general. Uh, DNA is a uh, molecule. When I, when I went to, to, I guess, high school, when we were taught about DNA, that was really the stuff of heredity. In other words, it sounded as if it was hanging around there waiting for the new individual to arise. And then you transfer the information, the code for the proteins that have to be made. And that would, the job would be finished, be nice and locked up inside the nuclei of cells. Well, the fact is that that's only a small part of its function. Most of the time, the DNA is busy coming apart and sending its code out so that you can make new proteins for new cells. When cells divide and they have to repair and replace bad cells, you, you need more proteins. And the code for making proteins is in the DNA. So the DNA is constantly active. And the result is that when it's active, it, the, the two chains that make up the DNA come apart. And when they're apart and working, that's when you can get the damage. The DNA can, can split. There can be breaks in the chain. You can get a, a break in one chain, or you can get a, a both chains breaking. You get sort of a double, uh, a double whammy. You get the, uh, two, the, both chains have two strands are broken. And that's the damage that people believe, that doctors believe, it starts the process of forming a cancer. And it's a slow process because the thing is that you have to go through, all, you know, many years before you get enough of this damage to uh, start and, uh, and form the, the tumors and to invade the cells that are going to eventually threaten your life. Dr. Martin so, Blank is our guest on the program going by way too quickly. We'll have to see if we can get Dr. Blank on another program. The book is called Overpowered. A few minutes left in the program. As people are listening and they're hearing this and probably really straightforward from a gentleman who spent his entire life in, in science. Uh, the doctor is part of the Department of Physiology at Columbia. I mentioned uh, all of his degrees, his, prudential, his uh, professional credentials. As they're listening, I'm sure they're thinking, okay, what can I do to limit my exposure? Can I still use my cell phone? Maybe use it in a different way. Maybe use it fewer hours each day. What can we do to limit our exposure? Well, one of the simple things is that most people don't realize this, but they, every time the phone is on, it is communicating with the towers. That's how the tower knows where you are. It can send you a message. So when you're not using the phone, shut it off especially when you put it in your pocket. Because one of the things that's been found is that men who carry their cell phones in their pocket show reduced sperm counts. And that's, uh, this was shown up in fertility clinics where there was a relationship between uh, how the cell phone, using the cell phone and the uh, number of, and, and the sperm count, the decreased sperm count. So the major thing they can do is to limit their exposure to this cell phone radiation. Shut off the cell phone when you're not using it and use it as sparingly as you, as you can. Children like to go to sleep with the cell phone under their pillows, believe it or not. That should never be allowed. They should shut the damn thing. Or not. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say that because it really is a great device that people can use and enjoy. But it's like everything. You know, you need a knife to cut their food. But by God, you be careful with it because it can cut your hands as well. Well, and so many people use their cell phone as uh, as their wake-up device. They use it for the alarm clock, so I assume that's close enough to them and on during the night that that could be doing them harm. Well, it's certainly they should certainly not do that. The point is that there are lots of alarm clocks that one can use and mechanical devices. One does not need that. One certainly doesn't, one does not need that on all night because while it's on and sending out the signals, remember, it is communicating with the tower. And now, by the way, for people who are interested in privacy and uh, not being tailed, uh, that, that's a tail. In other words, that tells the world where you are if they want to find out. So that uh, if you're interested in privacy, you can certainly eliminate 
that as a source, of, as a leakage source. Here's something that will really get your attention in the book towards the end, overpowered what science tells us about the dangers of cell phones and other Wi-Fi age devices. You get an email from a gentleman, a father, who's saying, uh, in my son's school, they are about to uh, to put Wi-Fi in. And people are going to be connected to the Internet. Is this going to be harmful? Tell us what your response was. Well, I don't remember the specific one, but there was one parent I remember who, who wanted to do something about it. Yes. This, that was my real introduction to the... I, I'm a scientist, boy, and I, I really like science, and I like hanging out in the lab, and I like asking questions and getting answers of, uh, in a scientific framework. But I saw that there was a real problem, and part of the problem was the ignorance that people had, that they... Not only am I a scientist, but I'm an educator, and I thought that it was part of my function to tell people, to educate them to what, it's, what the reality was. And so basically, I, I gave this man information. I started to tutor him, in effect, and gave him enough to get started. And believe me, he, he caught the lateral pass, and he carried the ball, and he organized things, and he actually got things changed in, in his child's school. So I think... Education is, is a very important part of, of our function in the world. Not only do we have to find out these things, but we have to let the world know as well. It's important that people become aware of all these things that are complicated things that are going on in our environment that we should be aware of and control because many of these things are, are potentially harmful and they're relatively easy to protect against if well, we're aware of them. Yeah, it's interesting. You use the word control. In the book, Overpowered, it's not like all this stuff is bad. Go bury it in the backyard and, and you'll be okay. You really make a case. There's really no need to abandon. We really know what the risks are. We need to take what you call precautionary, the precautionary principle, which is sort of protecting ourselves. Uh, and you use the, the case of the aerosol back in, what, 30, 40 years ago that there was this new invention and we found out we were having problems and now they're trying to control that. So you're not saying we need to abandon this. We just need to make some modifications. We have to really understand what's going on to the point where we modify things sufficiently. And not only the, the manufacturing, but also the, uh, the way in which we deal with this stuff. I mean, I was just reading just the, uh, was it, earlier this week that one of the new materials, that, that single layer carbon, that uh, graph, graphene that, that's been discovered, apparently it's a very good shield against uh, electromagnetic waves at a uh, high frequency. And so, who knows? There, there are things that we will be able to learn in our technology that may help us in this fight to try and keep uh, our bodies intact with all these new influences. But I think the most important thing is that we've got to realize that we are living in a fool's paradise if we don't listen to the biology. I mean, measuring these things that the agencies do and say that, well, we're, we're very safe, we're less than a percent of what we said is the limit, the limit is based on heating of tissue, and that has nothing to do with, with the dangers that are available. Sure, if you heat things up, uh, we'll, we'll get in trouble, but we get in trouble a lot earlier with these things because this stuff interferes with the very basics of our lives. When you start messing about with DNA, you're really touching important parts of our body, and these have great ramifications in terms of health. So I think we've got to learn to get the, the answers from the biology and not listen to the people who talk about uh, it, it's not heating you up, so it's not doing any damage. Even the low stuff that doesn't do damage, as they claim, warms your, the side of your head. Many people who use cell phones will tell you after a long conversation, the side of their head feels warm. Well, that's telling you something, and I think that you ought to start paying attention because if you can feel it, let me tell you, let me assure you, the cells have felt it long before that. Fascinating discussion, and I hope that Dr. Blank can come back with us. And in the book, Overpowered, you talk about levels lower than the current safety standards, and we think that's sort of like if we're lower than the current safety standards, we're going to be fine, are harmful as well. And hopefully we can talk about that on a future program. The book, it's important reading, Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. Books available every major bookstore across the country, online at Amazon.com, BarnesandNobleOnline.com. You can go to our website and link on and get all the information on Dr. Blank. 
Doctor, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Look forward to having you back. It's a very important book. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the interview. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. More after this.